Hello, welcome, I'm Andreas Schatt, your Tech Curious Web Designer. In this tutorial, we will take a look at the upload page of our TikTok clone application. We will upload an image and create a post using a form object and save it to the database. We will also see how we can attach a drag and drop file to an input field and how to dynamically assign the author of the post in the backend. But before we get started, if you like this content, give this video a thumbs up subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon. This helps me to grow this channel and to reach more aspiring web developers. And if you want to support my work financially, you can subscribe to my Patreon page and get access to exclusive content. Thank you so much, I really appreciate you. Okay, and now without further ado, let's dive in. A big thank you to all my supporters on Patreon, buymeacoffee.com and on YouTube. In this tutorial, we will implement the upload functionality. So when we upload the image and create this post, it's added in the database and we display it here on the home page, as well as on the explore page. Let's get started. So in order to upload an image, our user has to be logged in. However, we have not implemented the login process yet. So to make sure we are logged in, let's display here in the sidebar the user's avatar image. And if not logged in, we will get a broken image link. So I'm going to the navigation file, so in the templates folder, to includes, navigation.html. Here I'm going to the profile button and show here the user's avatar with user.image.url. So each Django template comes with a user object included by default. This user object represents the current logged in user. But if no user is logged in, this image link will be broken. Okay, save this file and let's check it out. And as we can see here, we are not logged in. Let's log in now through the admin interface. Then back to the home page, and now we are logged in. Next, let's add the upload functionality. I'm going to my post folder, and to add data to a database, we use a form. And to store the forms, I create a new file and call it forms.py. Then I import the forms class from Django and also the post class from the models.py file. Then I define here the post form class, which inherits from the model form. And inside I add this meta class. Here we define the model we're using, so the post model, and the fields we're using. So the form will have the fields for the image, the body, and the tags. But we're not including here the author. We will add the author later in the backend, before saving this object in the database. Okay, save this form, then we go to the views.py file, import the post form in here, form.forms, then we go to the upload view, and instantiate here the post form, which basically means we are creating an instance or an object of this class, using parentheses, and I call this object here form and then I pass this form object to the template. Okay, save this file. Now let's go to the upload page. So in my template folder, I go to partials and here do the upload.html file. And first I'm going to demonstrate here with this code how a basic Django form looks like. So we have the form tag, we have here the form method, in this case it's the post method for sending data to the backend, but it could also be the get method to fetch data. Then if we send the request to a different view in the backend, we would use the action attribute here and add here the URL. But if we send it to the same view that rendered this page, we can either leave the action attribute blank or omit it. And the ENC type multipart form data is important when sending files with this form. Like in our case, we upload an image file. Then inside the form, we have the CSRF token, 
which stands for cross-site request forgery. And this token is a security feature that protects the website from attacks coming from another site. So this token has to be included in any form with a POST request. Then we have the form object. Like this it would render out already the whole form. This form includes the form.image, the form.body and the form.text input field. On this page however we have added additional CSS styles and AlpineJS attributes on the input fields. So I will not use the form object like this but we will use the rendered input fields. And here important is that the name of the fields correspond with the property name on the model class. So this is the image field, type is file, it accepts image files and this field is required. Then we have the input field for the body, so name is body, type is text and we have also the max length of 80 characters, as defined on the model class. And we have the text field. Again type is text and the max length of 80 characters. And finally we have the submit button. So by default when the type is not defined a button inside a form is already a submit button. So in this case we could omit the type but it's a good practice to add the type attribute on a button element. Alright, now that we know the basic elements we need let's add them to the page. And we have already placed the form element on this page. However, the input field for the image right now is outside this form, so it would not be included. Let's fix that. So instead of placing the form tag here, I change this to a normal div and add the form tag to the parent element. Now the form element contains all the input fields. Then I add here the post method and the enc type. Then importantly we add the CSRF token. Then in here we have a button to select the image, however we have not declared any type on it. So this would behave like a submit button. So let's add here the type button which basically does nothing by default. And then we have the input field for the image. So we need to add the name here. It has already the type file. And additionally I will also add the required attribute. Okay, then we go to the element to add the caption and the tags. Here we have the caption input as a text area. Here we need to add the name attribute which is body. Type is text and the max length of 80 characters. And then we have the input for the text. Name is text, type is text, and again with the max length of 80 characters. And the submit button is already defined. Great! But one element is still missing in this form, and that's the image we add with drag and drop. For now this image is only added to an AlpineJS variable, but not added to the form, but we can add it with a few lines of JavaScript. So here we have the file drop function, and with this code we attach the file we have dropped to a data transfer object, and then this object is used to assign the file to the input field. Alright, save this file. Now let's go back to the views.py file to add the logic to save this object in a database. And as we use the same view also for the POST request, we check here if the request method is POST. And if it's a POST request, we create a form object using the POST form, passing in the form data from request.post and the uploaded image from request.files. Then we check if all the fields in the form are valid. And if they're valid, we save the form. So this saves the form in the database. And then we redirect the user back to the home page. Let's add the redirect function. So here from Django.shortcuts, import redirect. Okay, now let's add the author, which right now is not yet included. So before we save the object to the database, we assign it to a variable. 
and add commit equals false. This prevents the save method from actually saving the object right away. Then we set post.author to request.user, which is the currently logged in user. And finally, we call the save method on the post to save this object to the database. All right, let's save this file and let's check it out. I drag and drop an image, then add a caption and a tag and submit the post. And we got redirected to the homepage, so the upload function worked. And when we scroll down, we see the post we just created. Nice. Nice. But we expected this post at the very top, so let's fix that. For this, I'm going to my home view and order the post query set by the created add field, which stores the date and time the post was created. And with the minus sign here in front, I reverse the order, so the newest post is displayed first. OK, save this file. Let's check it out. And now the newest post is first. Nice. Now let's test with uploading a new one. This time I use the select image button here, add a caption and text, and submit the post. Great, and this post is displayed first. Now let's also display those posts on the explore page. So I'm going to the explore partial here, then go to the articles, remove all of them except of one, and create a loop here. Add here for post in posts, close it with end for. Here we have the article image and display it dynamically with post.image.url. Display the author avatar with post.author.image.url and the author's username. Okay, save this file. Now let's modify the views.py file. We go to the explore view, fetch again all the objects from the post table, order them by the latest, and add this object to the context. And the posts we have created so far are displayed here. Awesome. Okay, and this is all for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we will focus on the home page and scrolling. We will make the scroll buttons work, implement snap to post scrolling with the mouse, and add pagination for infinite scrolling. If you like this content, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and click the bell icon not to miss the next one. I hope to see you there. Until then, Happy coding my friends, and bye bye for now.